Are you looking for delicious and healthy candy recipes that are sugar-free? Well, you're in luck. Today we have not one, but two recipes that are perfect for diabetics and weight loss. If you're looking for a dessert that does not spike your blood sugar, this is the perfect recipe for you. We're gonna take Reese's Pieces peanut butter cups down from 12 grams of carbs to two net carbs, and let's go. I cannot wait to show you how to make this. We have our fabulous ingredient list, starting with our crazy Richard's peanut butter. Now there's this huge misconception with peanut butter. So many people come to my office. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Dietitian Shelley. During the day, I work with clients to help lower their blood sugars, be they have diabetes, pre-diabetes, or insulin resistance, as well as lots of women with hormonal issues. So if that's you, I would love it if you would like this video, subscribe to this channel. But this question about peanut peanut butter is a lot of folks think that it's high in sugar. Well, if we look at the labels, we see that on the Crazy Richards, the ingredients is peanuts, the net carbs, carbs minus fiber is two. So this is a winner. Now, of course, you can use almond butter. It's up to you. We add to this one of our Lily's crisp rice, and this is one of my favorites, gang. It is like a Nestle Crunch, and Nestle Crunch was one of my favorite candies. We have 100% butter. Again, we cannot stand any of that margarine stuff. Gross, increasing that inflammation. And then a cup of our Lily's chocolate chips. Now these have two net carbs. And of course, our swerve would be one tablespoon of swerve. Grab your muffin tin, a super tiny spatula, your hand beaters, and well, I'm saying muffin tin again, so I guess grab your muffin pan first. I'm gonna try these. These are some parchment paper muffin tins. I got them over at Walmart. Y'all, I don't have any kind of luck with parchment paper, any of this, so we're gonna try these. And yes, my mixer. Y'all, I'm so cheap. I'm bougie on a bayou. Look at that scotch tape holding the bottom of this together. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not embarrassed. So if y'all wanna clown me for not having a fancy Hamilton Beach, go right ahead. Y'all, it has been with me for such a long, long time. I I do not like to throw away things unless they're broken. And your two bowls. Grab those muffin tins and line your muffin pan with the parchment paper. So here we go. This is something new that I'm trying out live on this video. Well, this video really isn't live. Um, size wise, it's a we, can, we got a little bit of a struggle bus happening, but you know what? We're gonna make it work. We're not gonna quit. We're gonna keep working at this. It's gonna be fine. This recipe makes eight, but you can see I, I don't know why I did this. I did 12. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's, I guess it's just something, something normal. Um, go ahead, when you're done with that, it's a little bit of a disaster, grab one of your mixing bowls and grab that crazy Richard's. So we're gonna add a half a cup of this. Now you can see with natural peanut butter, so because remember the in ingredients are just peanuts, we're on the struggle bus as well. Uh, with this. You may need to use a spoon. You may need to warm up the spoon by putting like some hot water over that spoon, but I guarantee you it's worth it. Uh, go ahead and add a tablespoon of that swerve to this. So swerve is made from select ingredients from different fruits and vegetables. So it's zero calorie, it's non-GMO, it is absolutely awesome. But the only thing I disagree with swerve and a lot of our other sugar replacers, be it you use allulose, be it you use uh, monk fruit, is that I don't measure cup for cup. I feel like it gives an aftertaste when it does that. And I'm gonna do a video down the road on how to cook with sugar replacers because we make a lot of mistakes. But I encourage you to use half the amount. So if you use a cup of sugar, use a cup of swerve. If the recipe calls for a cup of swerve, use half a cup. It's really gonna make a difference in that taste. Add a tablespoon of butter. Now I'm using a baby spatula. You can mix this. Again, you're, you're gonna have to manipulate this a little bit. This is not gonna be a one second deal. But in, in reality, this is only about one to two minutes that you'll need. You see I'm pressing down on the peanut butter. I'm pressing down on the butter, the swerve. I'm really trying to mix this together because I don't want whenever I grab my hand mixer for it to explode all over the place. Now it will get a little bit messy. You know what? Who cares? The best kitchens are the messiest kitchens. I'm telling you that right now. When you feel comfortable enough, when you feel things are combined enough, go ahead and grab the mixer. Yes, mine does have that scotch tape on it and give it a good mixture. You wanna make sure it's pretty smooth, all the lumps are out, that the butter's really mixed into that peanut butter because we don't wanna just take a bite of butter 
we don't want to take a bite of the swerve really get it nice and mixed when that's done place that bowl aside and grab your smaller bowl you're going to add to that your cup of your lily's chocolate chips and um you know you kind of see that i'm using two different bags that's because one of my bags had a very few amount in there and then the other one was full and uh, you kind of see there that um, i'm dancing a little bit with that crazy richard we're gonna add another fourth cup to this okay and um yes we're gonna go ahead and crush that lily's bar i keep it simple gang i'm not gonna use a knife and cut it on up i'm using my fingers you know crunch 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 yes i'm gonna take a bite of that i love me some chocolate and yes y'all i am a girl who loves to lick the beaters let me know in the comment section if that's you um go ahead and uh Let's get ready to go to that microwave. Follow me to the microwave and um, yeah, I had some coffee in there. Oops, get it on out of there. We're gonna microwave this on 30 second increments. You don't wanna do it all at once because what'll happen is it'll get burned and you'll be mad and then you'll write a nasty comment and I don't want that. And hey, shout out to me, Ray. That's my daughter. She's helping me with filming this. Um, and we're gonna do it in 30 second increments until it melts. It took me three times. So just to kind of give you a perspective, don't do a minute 30 seconds. I promise you don't wanna have burnt chocolate on your hands. It's gonna stink, it's gonna smell. You're gonna get angry and really mix it. It's beautiful, you know, because of the Lily's crunch that I used, it's not gonna be completely smooth, but that's okay. Bring it back to those muffin tins and I'm taking about a tablespoon full and I'm scooping it in the muffin tin. Notice I'm also spreading it out. Now again, this is not anything meant to be beautiful. We're not, you know, heating butter knives or anything and passing it over there. This is okay, folks. These things do not have to be insanely beautiful. No one's judging anyone here. And then you're gonna put a spoon of that peanut butter mixture on top of this. Once you have it all out, you layer it with some more chocolate, of course. We put it in the freezer or refrigerator for about two hours. This will get hard quite quick. So this is actually a very, very fast dessert that you can make. And all this finished product is absolutely phenomenal. I am so pleased with how this turned out. You, your friends, your family will love this. They're not even gonna believe that this is diabetic friendly. And these Reese's Cups will not raise your blood sugar levels. This is a great way to have dessert. If you were too busy laughing or just like ooing and gooing and mouthwatering at this recipe, I have it all written out in the description box. Gang, I'm Dietitian Shelly. Much love. It's time to reveal the two ingredients and I'm gonna be a little controversial because there is something called True Whip, which I have here. I purchased it at Drug Emporium. You can see the price is a little high. This is sweetened with allulose. I kind of flipped it over to show you the ingredients. It's two grams of carbs. It's wonderful. However, there's also the Cool Whip Zero Sugar. Now it is more near three grams of carbs. It's not quote unquote as clean, I guess you could say, as the True Whip, but gang, I do realize we are at all levels of budgets and spending money. And I always tell folks, this is not the place to argue about that. I want everyone to be able to feel included. So um, guess what ingredient I'm gonna use? I'm gonna use the Cool Whip. <laughs> I know some of y'all are gonna lose y'all brains over this. Get over it. The sugar-free Cool Whip was on sale, so I'm gonna buy it. But if you clean, keto, whatever, whatever, you could do the True Whip. You can get it at your local Walmart. Come on, put the nasty boom, 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 boom. sugar-free Cool Whip. And go ahead and grab a bag of those Lily's milk chocolate chips. So Lily's is my preferred chocolate, but if you want to, there's Choc Zero. I'm sure there's a ton of other different varieties that you can find at your local Walmart. I usually buy mine at Drug Emporium. So, you know, use what you want. You don't have to be glued to what I say. Grab a small loaf pan and we're gonna line it with our non-stick aluminum foil. You all know that this is one of my favorite items to use in this kitchen. You can, again, definitely get it at your Walmart, your Kroger, your drug emporium and a lot of times i'm in the struggle bus with lining it don't rush it just keep it simple and folks will say well why do we want to make things like this why do we make you know these sugar-free desserts and you know some people say you know i'm teasing folks with this and honestly i make it because i like it i do enjoy candy i can't lie to you about that 
uh, but we want to modify it because a regular Three Musketeers bar, their full-size candy bar, has 240 calories, 7 grams of fat, and 42 grams of carbs. So that's almost three slices of bread. And gang, this is something that I don't make every single day. I mean, you know, so so I use this as a treat. It's super fun. And um, we're going to go ahead and place that aside and grab a bowl. And you notice that that's Christian. Give a good big old shout out to Christian. He cut the bag open. He poured the chocolate chips in. Now we're going to take this over to the microwave and we're going to microwave it in 30 second increments. It's crazy important because it's very easy for us to go, oh, let me just microwave it for a minute. Well, we don't want burnt chocolate. It actually melts very very quickly you're going to go back and forth with it about three times and um it works wonderful now to this once it's smooth we're going to combine our cool whip in here now again a little trick that i want to show you all is i don't believe in lopping the entire container in because it's going to be a pain in the butt to serve the cool whip's still going to be like it says cool it's going to be cool and the chocolate's hot so it's going to harden a little bit so you really have to bring those muscles in and, and stir it and I do it like half a container maybe like another little scoop here and there you do it how you wish I don't advise using a hand mixer for this I prefer to stir it but again this is up to you these are your recipes and I want you to feel as comfortable as possible doing this once it's combined we're gonna pour it into our pan and notice I'm using you know kind of like a flat edge spatula this may be called something specific if it is let me know in the comments section and it is a little hard to do this. You know, it's gonna take a little bit of manipulation. That's okay, that's okay. You, you know, you could use a butter knife, use whatever you wanna do. And it's gonna get a little messy. That's okay as well. I say the messiest kitchens are the best kitchens. So many folks are like, your kitchen's a mess. And I'm like, yeah, because I eat in there. We're gonna take this over to the freezer. I'm gonna freeze it for about one to two hours. Once that is done, you go ahead and take it and remove it from your pan and you want it to have a hard kind of feeling. Now, honestly, I probably should have froze mine a little bit longer, but I was just excited to taste this. Yes, yes, I was. And then this is where I made a boo-boo. I should have kept that spatula to cut it. I'm using a knife. You can see my fingers are getting a little sticky, a little messy. That's okay. Now off camera, what I did, notice I'm kind of cutting them into pieces, is I melted about a half a cup of lilies. I am not that type who's gonna dip the entire, um, you know, piece of that chocolate or that no guard as people will say in the, the chocolate, the melted chocolate. I'm gonna kind of drizzle it on top. I really prefer that method. Once you're done drizzling, I, you're supposed to put it back in the freezer, but I want a piece. I'm going to eat it. I'm showing it off to you. Uh, gang, this last in the freezer. It's a great snacky snack to do. If you were too busy laughing, didn't get to write the recipe down, don't worry. It's in the description box. And uh, gang, I wish you all well. And hey, for more diabetic recipes, be sure to like and subscribe. Much love.